Welcome to Handstamp. My name is Josh Coyne and I'm all in when it comes to live music discussion or live show discussion rather. Uh, on this episode, I'm joined by singer, songwriter and musician uh, Jelani Ari. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. How are uh, you doing? I'm good, thank you. And we, we just spoke a little bit up before I started recording. And this clearly means that you've gone international officially. That's that's crazy. That Wow. Yes. That's like my goal is for my music to reach the UK. Even to like live there someday has kind of been the dream since I've been small. But yeah, that's crazy. That's interesting. So you've you've always had some desire to live in uh, London or or England one day. Yeah, just an urge inside, like watching stuff from there, reading books, and then just all the music that comes from there. I just feel like a natural into that place, and I I feel like my favorite time to write and be creative is when it's overcast and gray, and I know it's like that a lot over there. Um, so I don't know if I would get tired of that, but. That's one reason too, just the people and fashion and all that. Well, let me say from a personal experience, yes, you absolutely would get tired of it, but there is also a lot to love <laughs> over here. Was, was it music that maybe informed your desire to come over and live here then? Did that play a part? I think so. That and just movies that were based there and just felt like, I don't know, different. It's crazy that there's such a different culture from here with like, San Diego, California, this is all I know. So just to, I've never been out the country before either. So just to like experience something like that would probably be super eye-opening. Just getting very inspired. And, yeah. Well, it goes without saying that there's the opposite thing where like everyone over here growing up listening to rock music wants to go over and live in California. So there's some balance yeah. for you. Uh, you mentioned yeah. that you grew up living in uh, San Diego, I believe the suburbs. So talk to me about sure. your earliest memories of kind of starting to care about music. Yeah, I'd say probably around five years old driving with my aunt in her car just listening to the radio, like who was on at the time? A bunch of Green Day, uh, James Blunt, who I know is a meme now, but that Your Beautiful song for some reason was like, I don't know, a very vivid memory and like Sean Kingston. So that was one. And then my uncle also around that time used to rap and his studio was actually my brother's, my brother's room now, but it was his studio back in the day. So I would just be sitting there on the couch with like, producers and stuff and I never had an urge to like make music but it was something that was very around at the time um, my dad's always been playing like Kanye West college dropout was a big one just like driving home from school or football games um in Biggie and Tupac uh, but yeah I feel like those were my earliest kind of memories where it made me think or brought me somewhere and I guess being around people who are actively making music, rapping or or whatever, that kind of removed a barrier that I think a lot of people, when they start to make music, the barrier that exists is, oh, wait, I can't make music. Or, you know, like it, it feels like this kind of unattainable thing that you have to be rewarded in some way, the right to make music. I think some people go mm. through that. Whereas for you, you knew that it was something that you can just do. Yeah, I guess. I mean, like, I would always just sing with my aunt or just sing to, like, Frank Ocean, thinking about you in, like, middle school. I was like, oh, I can hit that falsetto. Um, but it wasn't until, like, high school that it was kind of like the SoundCloud scene, the SoundCloud trap and stuff was, like, on the rise. And I love that stuff. And I was just like, I kind of want to make something different. Um, and it kind of, it was weird. It came from, like, the R&B, hip-hop, and then like some alternative stuff, but I've always had an urge to like make an alternative record, guitar driven record, um, rock record. Um, but it's crazy that I was just able to do that and like am now noticed or like known as like indie rock. It's just, it's a trip to me, like looking the way I do able to be able to like take that space and 
A broad palette, so that always helps. That helps yeah. Inspiration coming from all over the shop. Um, also, I know that a lot of people have mentioned this to you in the past, but the fact that you you basically describe Frank, Frank Ocean as though he's a legacy act, that makes me feel beyond washed. So I just need to make you aware of that. Um, <laughs> So in San Diego, <laughs> when you did start to kind of care about music, um, yeah. did you start to see live music at all? I did. I feel like 2017 was my first festival and it was Tyler the Creator's Flognal. Yeah, sure. Is that Camp Flognal, right? Camp Flognal, yeah. yeah, yeah. And who were some of the like acts? Um, Tyler was crazy, his live show, ASAP Mon. I'm trying to think of more like bands that were there. I can't really remember. Um, but yeah, that was beautiful. A lot of like SoundCloud rappers, because my friends all around me kind of love that. I liked it too. So Lil Uzi had a show in like North Park. Um, Rock Hampton had their show. That was really cool. Um, but yeah, I never never saw myself on the stage for the longest time and now like my first time playing with the band was a couple months ago and I'm like oh I get it now like I can actually do this like okay it feels right and I'm ready to do live shows but for the longest I was super shy and just like never saw myself up there but now I think it's like it's time. Exciting so when you start to see shows and maybe attend festivals like Flognor, um, something that's really great about those kind of communities that are built is that um, whereas music genres used to exist in kind of silos, uh, mm -hmm. there was a celebration of all genres. And, you know, people like Tyler, the creator, I mean, he's an absolute music obsessive and he has no real limitations on what he considers good music and I think that I guess that's something you've grown up with so that has influenced your approach to music is, is that fair to say? Yeah for sure no doubt. that's great and uh, long may it continue you know the the, the more genreless we get the better in my opinion. For real I agree I agree so what are some of the music venues in San Diego or the surrounding area that people generally celebrate? Um, I think North Park Observatory is one. A lot of acts come through there. Um, the Sports Arena in Point Loma, it's a bigger one. I saw the 1975 play there, I think, at the top of last year before COVID hit. Um, Soma, which is like a smaller venue that's next to Sports Arena. House of Blues, which is downtown, it's kind of a smaller like capacity, but very, um, it's very open for like stripped back kind of performances, I feel, or just, what's the word, like vulnerable. Um, like intimate, I suppose. Intimate, thank yeah. you. Yes, that's the word. Um, and then the Soda Bar was one. I feel like there's a lot more too, because I haven't been to a lot of shows here, surprisingly, but um, those are some of the ones that I've been to. Yeah. Nice. And you mentioned the 1975 and you got to see them recently. Uh, and yeah. you said previously that an ex-girlfriend essentially put you in contact with a lot of kind of psych rock, uh, pop rock, um, you know, noise rock, folk bands. And that kind of yeah. really had an influence um, on the record, I suppose, that you've just worked on. Uh, around that time, did you did that appreciation at least lead to you kind of wanting to see these bands live? And obviously you were able to achieve that recently. I think so. I'm just like imagining what those songs could sound like in a live space, I think is what, yeah, drew me to that, especially like in 1975, um, to have those feelings, just listening to the songs and having those memories associated with them and then being able to have another memory, but seeing them live and like really, really feeling the music and just like, yeah, I think it definitely drove me to that for sure. Good show. Did you enjoy it? Oh my God, great show. I had, I, I bought like a jacket from a thrift shop like a couple hours before. And I guess I had the tag on the whole time. 
doing this show. <laughs> I found out it happened. I was like, like, just super embarrassed. But other than that, the show was amazing. The, like, the lights, the screens that they had, just the whole design was crazy. I think Maddie had like this like walking like elevator thing where he performed on. I was just like, that's amazing. I definitely couldn't do something like that right now because it's some big budget shit. But yeah, that shit was super inspiring for sure. Yeah, I mean, they have dancers on as well, I suppose. I mean, it, it was yeah. kind of, it seemed like it was inspired by um, Stop Making Sense, which is the live um, performance concert film, which is probably considered one of the best ever um, by the Talking wow. Heads. It's called uh, Stop Making Sense. And, and you could see, you know, like people running on the spot, the dancers were running while singing along. It's like incredibly mm. Talking Heads-ish. And I loved it. I saw the 1975's wow. performance at, um, at uh, Glastonbury. And oh, it, was, it was one of those ones where you think like, you aren't settling, like you're really trying to like make this a special event. Is that something you value That's when nice. you go to see a show? No doubt, no yeah. doubt. I, I love it when artists are like, put your phones down too, like yeah. just be here and like feel this music, but yeah. And that, and that seems to be something that you're really enthusiastic about as well, because I believe you've said, um, for a, I'll quote you um, <laughs> right to your face. Uh, for a lot of kids my age, I see that we numb ourselves in order to carry on with our lives. I want mm -hmm. to make people take a step back and reflect on those times where we turned the switch off. Is that essentially what you're talking about? Like the people being able to step back and have a collective moment away from the online experience? Yeah, just to feel something. Um, yeah, because we numb ourselves. We just see so much, like, every day, every minute. Um, and just to have, like, this group experience of feeling maybe something similar or something different, but just feeling something together, I think, is super important for people my age and just people in general right now. I agree. And I think that's one thing that people have really missed about live music is you know, like-minded people in the same area. Um, mm. You don't have to think a certain thing. You just have to be in the moment and enjoy yeah. it. Um, but of course, you do have to get your phone out to record every single moment of the concert. Yeah, but, I feel you know, it. I feel it. it. It is what it is. Um, yeah. I'm conscious that, you know, you're asked about this quite regularly, but you grew up yeah. uh, heavily involved in the world of football, or yeah. um, as it's affectionately known over here, American football. Um, can you compare the experience of performing in a competitive environment to uh, the experience of performing to live music crowds? Oh, that's crazy. Whoa. I feel like the energy, I feel like the excitement slash nervousness before you take the stage or the field is very similar. Um, like just the preparation before that and like, the un, I feel like the unease of just like knowing how it's gonna go is there. Um, I feel like it's super similar. Like you don't feel like all the pressure is on you because you have this team and you're like, you're going to one common goal. And I feel like it's just like that with my band too. It's like, I don't feel super lonely because I have you to my left, you to my right. And we're all going off of each other to make like this one thing and experience for people. Um, so yeah, I feel like it's super similar, except without all of like the injuries and like concussions. Um, I definitely need to get a brain scan because I've got I've had three concussions during football. <laughs> so I don't know where that's led me or yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's serious stuff. That's that's worth doing, but <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I guess one of the other main differences is that hopefully half of the crowd isn't willing you to fail. You know, <laughs> this is true. Yes. You know, so wow, this yeah. I, I know almost nothing about American football, but what position did you play? I played a few. I played um, slot receiver, running back, um, on defense. I played corner and safety, and then on like special teams, I would do kick return kick back they so, kind of just threw me everywhere to be honest my very basic understanding of football suggests that you're really quick is that 
Is that fair? I, yeah, yeah. I'd say okay. that's those positions, especially if they're like quick, not super fast or big, but just quick. Like need a couple yards. Bam. <laughs> okay. Well, NFL teams call me. I obviously know my stuff. Uh, <laughs> Your, your debut EP, Helvetica, was released in 2019. Um, mm. and, and that meant that the subsequent touring cycle that would usually follow an EP release like that has been affected because, you know, when, when a lot of people release a, a debut e EP, sometimes the touring cycle just becomes constant after that. Uh, take yeah. us through some of the ways in which you've had to pivot in the last year or so in the absence of live music. Yeah, so at the top of, I guess, 2020, we were supposed to just do shows. We had a show, we had South By, but we had some random festival in like Alabama that we were going to do, and then just some shows in San Diego and LA. Um, and then it was just completely stripped away from us. And like online shows started to become the big thing. And I wasn't sure how I would kind of ease into that or go into that space. Um, but I feel like it was after a couple months of like just watching other artists shows and like coming to the like terms and reality of what was going on. I was like, okay, well, I feel like I have to get out there in some way. Uh, so I think like last fall, we did um, Live X Live um, we did bands in town. I think that was actually this year. Um, and then some other ones. But it's it's a super strange thing just performing to a camera and like imagining that there's like little people inside that are, are watching you. Um, but it's it's been super strange because I haven't really had like that tour experience or like a bunch of shows together. And so this has kind of been like in a weird way my introduction to shows but it's like online. Mm -hmm. So my first show in August at the Echo, it's just, it's going to be an experience and something completely new that I really, I don't know, nervous, excited, and it's just, yeah, I'm excited to experience that. So I guess that's a very unique experience that this situation has brought upon people, which is that new artists will have played more virtual sessions or small intimate sessions than any actual live shows you know that's yeah. probably the first time in since popular music began that that's been the case um, yeah it's nuts very strange but <laughs> who more suited than it than someone who was literally raised by the internet um, <laughs> that was a really good segue you have that was to appreciate a good one. God damn. There we go. so a lot of your uh, creative life and fan base has been kind of attributed to that and your collective experience on websites like Reddit, I guess. For anybody that doesn't know, take us through how your online life has kind of informed your musical community. Yeah, so I um, made this collective in 2017 called Raised by the Internet and we formed on uh, Brockhampton, Frank Ocean and All Future subreddit. And I, I just asked, like, did any, does anyone want to make a group where we have no genre, no limit? We just make beautiful art. And so the people who answered to that are, it was raised by the internet today. Like my producers, my other artists, friends, Giddy, Troy, Asha, Zion, um, all just super like individual, but beautiful minds and all talented and all occupy different genres. And we just, as a group wanna show people that like, yeah, it's okay to just be super different and have these different, I guess, ideals and different sounds, but still be part of this larger thing, which is the internet or this family that we can be a part of. And so I feel like our message is just like welcoming people and like being okay with just, I guess like being different um, and being like, oh, it's okay to be outward on the internet. Um, but yeah, I don't even know if that really answered the question, but. <laughs> no, it did. I mean, basically you were able to build a community and then you've been kind of expressing yourself as a group and now individually. And I believe that many of you are now ramping up to kind of debut releases, including yeah. yourself. 
Yeah, so every, like, after my release this summer, everyone was kind of just going album. Everyone's just been working on their solo shit. Um, but I think hopefully next year, I can't, I can't really, like, tell, um, but hopefully we can make a group project together. That's been kind of the goal from the start. Um, but everyone's kind of just refining their, their sword or their, their pen right now. Exciting. And speaking of your record, it's called uh, I've Got Some Living To Do. It's out July the 30th. Obviously, it's been a testing year for everyone, as we've already mentioned. What did it mean to you to have this record to work on during this time? Mm. It was very, the time itself, I feel like it was very insular, very just like, it was just forcing you to kind of like look inside yourself. Um, and so I think it gave the record like another, um, what's the word? Just another layer um, of introspection and um, honesty and like facing like the time and just being okay with that, like from these heights writing that, like the, the George Floyd stuff happening um, and just trying to make sense of that and putting that into a song um, and trying to make lighter songs like Estella Brown or Marigold in the midst of that too, to like, since no one's going outside, trying to bring the outside in. Um, so just finding ways to like still feel alive, um, I feel like was one of the goals on the record. And like, I've got some to do, just trying to propel I guess myself, but in the end, like other people to just live in when it is time to just go crazy and hang out with your people, travel, go to live shows, just just have fun and live. Um, yeah. Well, it's a beautiful record, Jelani. You have a real like accomplished sound and it feels like it's the start mm. of something even bigger. So um what can fans expect when this music starts to uh, enter the live arena? Oh, shoot. Well, I'm not by myself. It's not me and Jack anymore. Just playing like a guitar and singing or DJ and we're having a full band. So that should be crazy. Um, and you're playing bass, I believe, did you say? I want to, but I'm just on the microphone. I think okay. maybe a couple more months and maybe I will be playing bass. <laughs> But yeah, I think we'll we'll have a nice stage design. We're still in like the midst of planning that out. Um, but yeah, just a lot more shows coming for me and the boys. Um, hopefully we'll be in the UK, um, but we'll be in the US for I think the remainder of this year, um, just traveling around. But yeah, more more music, more music videos, just more of everything some merch maybe sometime soon um, but yeah well you know that i'm gonna be emailing you trying to scalp tickets when the london shows oh come yeah we um, got you first first <laughs> <laughs> so VIP. something that i uh, I, <laughs> I like to ask people uh, for this is essentially a glorified way of like begging for you to do the work for me uh, oh, finally, oh. you you have been through the hand stamp experience. Uh, oh. <laughs> who do you feel as though would be a good guest to talk about live music with? Oh shoot! So I could say like anyone. Yeah. Oh shit! I mean, I mean, maybe in the world of like realistic guess, I mean, like don't say who like who's huge. Don't say Frank Ocean. He's probably not going to come on this right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, let me see. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like this artist that I've been listening to a lot, um, James Ivy. I think he's based in like New York, but I I'm pretty sure he does a lot of his production. I think he was on. I saw Porter Robinson's like Secret Sky Festival, um, but I feel like his live show or little thing that he had on there was really cool. Um. Maude Latour, um, she's also based out of New York, but I feel like she has a lot to say about live music and just music in general. Um, 
yeah, I feel like that's some I'm trying to think of more, but those are more like artists that I feel like are emerging right now and about to kind of break into like this stardom. Um, I was going to say Lord at first, but I'm like, I don't know. Lord is like, hard to me. Hey, look, I'll yeah. take Lord. I'll take Lord. And there's a new so, record coming. How exciting. Oh, my God. Yeah, she's she's incredible. Um, oh, yeah. Before we go down the Lord fandom rabbit hole, <laughs> uh, this sounds like an excellent place to leave it. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to hit subscribe and like. And if you enjoyed it, follow on social at handstamp pod if you if you want you know it's you know it's everyone asks this and you're being told to subscribe to everything but you know do, do it do, do it, it, it you, there we go i've got an endorsement <laughs> jelani it's been an absolute pleasure man thank you very much for your time thank you so much for having me have a good rest of your day